Is it normal for my main circuit breaker to be hot? If you're not an electrician, make sure you hire an electrician because they have all of the equipment and they can properly diagnose something like that. All right, this was a good question. It was sent in by Victor Tanchiangui <laughs> on the types of circuit breakers and how they work video. So uh, Victor asks, is it normal for main circuit breaker to be a little hot at times? Mine once in a while trip. I don't think my appliance is shorted as it could be reset. I think maybe it's too old. My house is 25 year olds. Thank you. Um, that's actually a really good question. So a lot of older homes, you'll notice um, some breakers are hot and it might not be every breaker. It might be just the main breaker, which is the one at the top. Once you start noticing that there's weird things going on with circuits and you start seeing things trip, often or you see some flickering happening. Um, there's a few different things that you can tell to diagnose whether a breaker is just failing or going bad. The fact that it's 25 years old, if the panel and all the breakers are new, but the house is 25 years old, it may not be that it's getting old. It may be that an appliance is starting to fail. It could be like a motorized appliance or something like that. Motors are designed to spin quickly at whatever their nameplate rating is. And so if a motor doesn't have enough grease and it's getting dried up or a bearing's going out or there's just gunk inside of it, it's gonna spin a lot slower. And there's a weird thing with motors, once they start spinning slower than they're designed to spin um, or they're bound up and they're not able to spin very quickly, they start drawing a lot more current. And so it could just be an issue of um, the breakers heating up because there's more current going through it than there's supposed to be. Um, it could be you know, that you have small wire and you have a, an appliance that's going out and so that, that the, the point at which that heat is experienced is going to be in that breaker. Not all the time, but that is one thing that could happen. Sometimes breakers will run at their rated current. So a 30 amp breaker might run at 30 amps. It might run at 31, 32, 33, because breakers are only designed to trip at 130% of their rating. Um, and that's usually over a long term overcurrent situation. So there, uh, there's a thermal mechanism on the inside of them that allows them to trip. Um, but it has to build up heat for that little bimetallic strip to start bending from the heat to separate for the breaker to trip. So a breaker might run just slightly above uh, what it's supposed to be at its 100% value, might be running at 120% and it's not going to trip. So it might be hot just because of that because you get so much of a load on it. One, it could just be yes, that it's old. A lot of old breakers, you know, these are just mechanical things. They just have little pieces of metal and springs and little levers and stuff inside of them. So over time, that stuff starts to get weak. It's exposed to elements. A lot of panels are on the outsides of homes. So just moisture and drying out moisture over time can get inside of these metal bits um, can cause things to not want to function as properly things can rust out and get corroded on the inside um, or you know just constant exposure to moisture um, if you have electrical issues and you have breakers that are constantly tripping to you're cycling something over and over and over so um, the little bits inside of it you know moving over time just reoccurring over time are going to weaken it um, there's going to be some kind of end of life eventually to all of these mechanical parts. So, um, yeah, I would say the best thing to do is to test that breaker out. Um, you know, get your multimeter out. First and foremost, just check the current on it. You know, if you have an ammeter um, or some kind of multimeter where you can check the amperage, I have a clamp on ammeter that I can clamp around the conductors to see how much current is going through them. And it's really important to check both of the hots that are coming into this breaker, or if it's three phase, check all three hots. Say it's a 200 amp breaker. If you have one of those hots that's got like 180 amps and one of them's got like 60 amps, there's an issue there, right? Like there's an imbalance in that system. And so you probably have weird numbers on your neutral as well. You have a lot more current on the neutral than you should because you have such a high imbalance in the system. But like weird things like that can cause heating um, because it's just a lot of heat going through a lot of current, you know, current traveling through a conductor generates heat and that heat escapes. Um, there's a heat loss. And so when you feel something hot, it could be something like that where there's just a high amount of current. Um, if there's not, if you have like a 200 amp breaker and there's like 40 amps of current and everything seems equally balanced and there's no issue, then I would start to investigate whether or not that that breaker is failing. It could be a good breaker 
it might not actually be failing, but there could be bad connections to the breaker. That's another thing that creates a lot of heating issues. So out in the field, we have specific torque settings that when we you know tighten conductors down to lugs, we need to make sure that the torque settings are set to a certain amount to make sure that the actual uh, bolt or lug is squishing down on those wires and is solid and there's no movement in those conductors. Because if there's any kind of movement or looseness, it can create arcing and arcing is a really, really uh, high resistance point um, where there's just a bad connection. So you can actually generate an insane amount of heat at these points. Usually in that situation, you're gonna start noticing a little bit of like melting or charring, um, some, some like obvious visual signs of like heat on that one conductor. Um, I've had jobs where somebody just forgot to put uh, you know, like screw the lug in and then they generate or they turn on the power and there's still a connection being made, but it's a really loose one. But you'll start to notice that the, over time, if you were to open it up and there's power running through those conductors, they'll start glowing red hot because it's not a tight termination. Um, so you're not maximizing all of the surface area for all of that current to go through. All of the current is trying to go through just a small portion of that wire that's making contact. So that's a way that heating can uh, occur. Another thing is that you could have a bus that's been damaged. Um, so there's not really a good connection from the bus to the breaker. You might have some lugs a lot of times, uh, spe specifically with the, the Square D QO stuff that we use, um, you can put a breaker kit in a main lug panel. So breakers are either, or panels are either main breaker or main lug. Main breaker usually comes with a breaker, but main lug does not have a main breaker in it because it's meant to be able to use as a sub panel somewhere. Um, but a lot of people will take breaker kits and they'll take these nuts out that are on these studs. And when you take the nuts off, you can actually take a breaker kit and slam the breaker kit in and re-secure it. So you can turn a main lug panel into a main breaker panel. And again, at a point where somebody should have torqued something and made sure that it's tight, you could just have a nut that's coming loose or something like that. So that breaker, the plates where the breaker attaches or like makes contact with the bus bars inside of that panel, there could be a little bit of looseness there, which creates heating. And all of that heating can translate up into the breaker and you might feel something hot. Um, you could have harmonics issues. This is probably a house, so I doubt you're having like severe heating due to harmonics issues. Um, that's a whole different topic, but those are just some of the things that might be creating the heat. If you want to test a breaker, um, I, I think it's a good idea, you know, to inspect a breaker. Actually, um, you know, try to simulate a situation where it should trip. If you've got um, a 30 amp breaker and you've got like 50 amps worth of current going through it, and you're testing it, and it's not tripping, that thing's bad. Um, if sometimes it trips and sometimes it doesn't, and the load is not changing in any way, you can tell, okay, there's an inconsistency in how this breaker is operating. Sometimes there's a problem, sometimes there's not. You do have to be careful with that though, because sometimes the situation in the building or the house, somebody's got like something else turned on all of a sudden that's you know sharing part of a circuit or it's on the same circuit. And so it's not gonna act the same. And then when they go shut that off, you're still sitting out there like, oh wait, now it's all of a sudden working, but the conditions of the loads and the circuit has changed. So trying to like isolate as many variables as possible um, and see how something acts, you know, rather consistently um, is a good idea. But if that thing is kind of failing over time, but it's working over time and it's hot, there's definitely something that you should check out. And a really good thing to do is to check with a known good breaker. So a lot of times if I have like, maybe not a main breaker, you're probably not just carrying around a 200 amp main, like sitting in the back of your van. Actually I am, I think I have like a 150, a 200 and a 225 right now. I keep so much crap in my van, <laughs> so much, it's stupid. Um, but a lot of times if it's just like a 20 amp breaker or something like that, I have a bunch of breakers for all different brands and stuff. Um, so I'll, a lot of times I'll go out to my van if I think a, a breaker is bad rather than trying to set up this whole experiment to test conditions at 130% and 200%, I'll just go get a good breaker and I'll swap it out, put that good breaker in there and then retest. And if nothing happens and it stays good, you know, it's 99% sure that the breaker was the issue. Another quicker way to do that if you don't just have other breakers is use a nearby breaker. So, you know, shut shut the nearby breaker off, take the wire out, put the original circuit that you were having an issue on on that other breaker that's not having a problem and flip it on and just see how it works. And then if it still kind of does the crazy thing, then you probably have something faulty with the load or the actual thing 
that's hooked up at the other end of the circuit. Because um, when things start to fail, when devices or when equipment uh, starts to fail, a lot of times it doesn't do it consistently. A lot of times there's like some weird situation within the equipment that shows up, um, but then it just kind of goes away and everything acts normal. And then when it's starting to fail again, you'll notice this weird thing showing up. So I hope that answered your question. I rambled a lot, but I hope it gave some value to you at least so you could help try to diagnose this. If you're not an electrician, make sure you hire an electrician because they have all of the equipment and they can properly diagnose something like that. Uh, by the way, I have some breaker videos. If you're more curious to like how breakers work and stuff like that, check this video out. This is actually the video that the comment was from. If you want to know how ground fault, dual function, and arc fault breakers work, click this video. Um, it's pretty good information in there as well. Love you crazy people, and I'll see you in the next one.